So this is the new GoPro Quick app on Mac. It's available on Mac at the moment, not on Windows. Windows will be coming soon. I've downloaded it and um, got some first impressions for you. I'm just gonna show you a little bit about it. First impressions are it's painfully slow and there's a few things you've really got to watch because GoPro are obviously just trying to make a little bit more money out of us. Now, I wanted this to be good and my experience so far has been pretty poor. Um, now, this is not me hitting on GoPro. I really am rooting for GoPro this year. I want them to bring out new cameras that really we want to buy. I will probably buy them anyway. Um, I used GoPro for the last few years. I really was looking forward to this editing software coming out to make the whole editing process a lot easier for not only their normal camera, but their 360 footage. And you, know, you just straight away, you can see what they're doing and it is trying to basically get some more money out of you. The first thing is that if you want to have more storage, you have to pay about another £49.99, and so that gives you another 500 gigabytes of storage to actually download and have it there, rather than having to use the cloud storage, because the cloud storage, if you're uploading your footage from your phone or from the camera, is really slow, and it's you're editing on a low resolution cloud streaming timeline, so it's like low resolution when you're editing, which isn't like a real problem. Straight away, you can see they're trying to bank a little bit more money out of us to start with, and um, the whole thing is just a bit slow because you're editing off the cloud. So yeah, these are the eight clips that you can click on down here and it gives you options to trim, add filters, adjust, reframe, and add text and change the volume and speed and everything. Um, the reframe bit was a bit awkward. When If you want to rotate it, it only gives you an option to rotate it clockwise. You can't rotate it back the other way, which is a bit strange. And when you automatically rotate it, it changes it to a nine by 16. I don't want to change it to a nine by 16. I want to keep it on a 16 by nine and leave the rotation. Um, so it does this weird adjustment. So I press rotate again and it changes it to a nine by 16. It's just a little bit strange, that little bit straight away. So in the adjust bit, you can adjust the exposure, the contrast of the picture. So you can play around with this. Uh, that's pretty, pretty basic. Um, and then in here you've got text so you can just literally add whatever text and you can see it's just spinning it's a little bit slow i'm using a mac mini m2 pro as well so it's not a slow computer it's probably one of the fastest computers you can get at the moment um and so that's i mean that's pretty basic you can add a little bit of text as well filters um you've got loads of different filters which is cool so you can just add filters to your footage to make it look a little bit better let's click on this one so um again I'm asking it to move along the timeline and it's just not really doing it. Um, so these are the different filters loading because you're all work working off the cloud. It's just a little bit slow. So, I mean, from here you can add more media. To get it a bit faster, you're gonna have to pay the subscription to get that premium plus subscription. You could add music, which you've got some built-in music, which is good. So you've still got to download it, as you can see. Um, then we've got themes. So you can change the theme of the auto edit for travel, glitch, urban there's uh, loads of different themes which is cool you can change the length for best for youtube custom length you can um change the format so i mean first impressions are it's a little bit basic it's quite slow because you're editing off the cloud and they're obviously trying to get a little bit more money out of us to get that premium plus they're offering something else called hyper smooth pro which is like I'm confused by because obviously you can stabilize your footage in post-production, which is great if you haven't already stabilized your footage, but how much better can HyperSmooth get? So if you've already got HyperSmooth on or HyperSmooth Boost turned on, which I've just added an update really for the GoPro Max Lens Mod 2.0 to have the option to have Auto Boost on there. So if you've already got HyperSmooth on there, how much smoother do you need your footage? It's gonna start looking a little bit fake. You just want, you still want to, in my opinion, especially if you're doing action sports, you want a little bit of unstabilized footage in there. You want something that looks a bit more natural. I don't want something that's so smooth that it just looks like it's not real. Um, so uh, again, when it comes to the action cameras, just going back to hyper smooth, it's a 360, just do flow state, for instance. So they don't say every year it's flow state one, flow state two, flow state three. GoPro keep on updating and not because they're not innovating, they're sort of clutching at straws and giving us 
Hypersmooth 6.0 this year, which is supposed to be a little bit better, but how much better do you need it to be? I don't need it to be any better than it already is, personally. So that's a little bit of a rant um, about that. So, I mean, let's uh, exit the editor. This is the main screen. It's pretty simple. You've got all your media. Again, not downloaded. Uh, it took a long time to sort of register when you go into here to make your edits, and I've done no edits yet. You can connect to your camera. It's still not downloaded the 10 second clip that I recorded earlier and given me a preview on this bit. You've got all your uh, cloud storage options here. You can see upgrade to Premium Plus to get 500 gigabytes of non GoPro cloud storage, which will increase the um, speed of the editing, and then access to Hypersmooth Pro and much more, but it's another 49 pounds in the UK. So my first impressions are not that impressed. I was hoping that this software was gonna be a big leap for GoPro. Uh, I was hoping we were gonna get a little glimpse of what we're gonna see from GoPro this year. And from this, I'm not seeing much and I don't hold much hope for the future. Um, it's still lacking, it's still not as good, anywhere near as good as Insta360's desktop studio. I don't see any special 360 um sort of editing options in here so yeah anyway I'm, I'm i'm still hoping that gopro do well it's not like not hitting on gopro i hope to work with gopro in the future hopefully i can help them improve stuff like this um so yeah it's a little bit disappointing but we'll wait to see how the year progresses okay that's it for this one